मै शिवा स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू द क्लास स्टूडेंट इन दिस क्लास वी विल स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम द हिस्ट्री टेक्स्ट बुक ऑफ क्लास एट एंड द चैप्टर इज वुमेन कास्ट एंड रिफॉर्म हेयर द चैप्टर स्टार्ट विथ स्टार्ट विथ अ क्वेश्चन एंड द क्वेश्चन इज हैव यू एवर थॉट ऑफ हाउ चिल्ड्रेन लिव्ड अबाउट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स अ गो स्पेशली द गर्ल्स चाइल्ड सो होप विद द क्वेश्चन इट इज क्लियर टू यू दैट वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी the society which exist in our country 200 years ago if we talk about the modern times what we see that nowadays most girls from middle class families go to school and often study with boys on growing up many of them go to colleges and universities and take up jobs after that they have to be adults before they legally married and according to law they can marry any one they like from any caste and community and widows can remarry too all women like all men can vote and stand for elections of course these rights are not actually enjoyed by all poor people have little or no access to education and in many families women cannot choose their husband but the society 200 years ago the condition was worse as women do not enjoy any types of freedom which they have now actually about 200 years ago indian society was not as it is now it had imposed many barriers on women they cannot go to school they cannot marry according to their will in some part of country sati pratha existed and widows were praised if they choose to death by burning themselves on the funeral pyre of their husband the society that existed in those days was also caste based people were divided along lines of caste brahmans and kshatriyas considered themselves upper caste other such as traders and money lenders often referred to as vaishyas were placed after them then comes peasants and artisans such as weavers and potters referred to as shudras the upper caste also treated many of groups as untouchable so here in short we can understand that many evil practices were existed in our society 200 years before ago but during the 19th and 20th centuries many of these uh, norms perceptions and evil practices slowly changed due to the efforts of some great social reformers who brought a great change in our society actually they fought for the change now let's see working towards change here we will try to find out that how these reformers influences the people and brought the change in our society from the early 19th century debates and discussions began to take place in order to root out the evil evils that had crippled society for years one important reasons for this was the development of new forms of communication now all kinds of issues were discussed by people and it reached to a wider public and become linked to movement for social change actually these debates were often initiated by indian reformers and reform groups and one such reformer was raja ram mohan roy who founded the brahmo samaj in calcutta he wanted to spread western education in the country he strongly disapproved the system of sati and try to change the lives of widows and finally due to his effort sati pratha was banned in country in the year 1829 the another popular personality was ishwar chandra vidyasagar who was in favor of widow remarriage british officials supported his cause and passed a law in 1856 that permit widows to remarry swami dayanand saraswati the founder of arya samaj also supported widow remarriage 
Now, let's see how does these reformers promoted the girls' education in the country. Girls begin going to school. Reformers felt that in order to improve the condition of women, it was necessary to educate them. So several schools were opened for girls. Ishwar Chandra Vidyasagar in Calcutta and many other reformers in Bombay set up schools for girls. But people reacted sharply against girls to school. They felt that girls should stay away from public places. So, they were taught at home. In aristocratic Muslim families in North India, women learned to read the Quran in Arabic. They were taught at home. So, here we can see, though it's not a, on a larger scale, but in some families, women were given chance to be educated. And soon, many women reformers come forward in the favor of women education. Now, Let's see how does these women reformers supported the women education. Women writes about women. Muslim women like the Begums of Bhopal did a lot for the promotion of education among the women. They set up a primary school for girls at Aligarh. Another remarkable woman was Begum Rukaya Sakhawat Hussain. She also opened a school for Muslim girls in places like Patna and Calcutta. By the 1880s, Indian women began to enter the universities. Some of them trained to be doctors and teachers. Many women began to write and publish their critical views on the place of women in society. Tarabai Shinde, a woman educated at home, at Pune published a book that is Stri Purush Tuluna. In this book, she criticized the social differences between men and women. Pandita Ramabai wrote a book about the pathetic conditions of upper caste Hindus' widows and set up a widow home at Pune. Orthodox Hindus and Muslims become worried about all these changes as they believed that this would corrupt their culture and erode family values. But by the end of 19th century, women themselves come forward and actively working for reforms. However, women ultimately began to enjoy greater freedom and from 1920s, some of them even joined various kinds of nationalist and socialist movements. Leaders such as Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose openly advocated and supported the demands for greater equality and freedom for women. Women were also actively participated in national movement for freedom. And finally, after independence, that is in 1947, our constitution guaranteed equal rights to men and women. So hope here you have understand that there was a long struggle behind this equal rights. Now in our next class we will try to understand caste and social reforms. So till then take care of yourself. Namashivai.